Hello and welcome to the second part of drawing trajectory for 3D shooting in Unity. How to draw the trajectory with force or velocity shooting was explained in the first video. This video aids in cutting the trajectory with object collision as well as showing only a part of the trajectory so that the player would not see the landing position, making showing the trajectory more challenging. If you already have a trajectory that is composed of calculating the positions of the trajectory and giving these positions to a line renderer, I believe you can still apply the approach explained here. First, I will show cutting the trajectory with collision. After that, I will show a way to shorten the trajectory in percentage or other ratios. Lastly, we will be combining them. I have some commented codes for both implementations. Through this video, I will be commenting and uncommenting them, and by following the video, you can choose your approach and implement only that part. Here I have two small changes to the previously explained draw trajectory code. First, the starting point is included in the line points at the start, making it the first point at its was, and start iterating other points from the second point, which is indexed at 1, and we are setting i to 1 at the start of for loop. The second change is that there was no variable to store the next point calculated for the trajectory, but we were directly adding the calculation to the array. Now to simplify the calculations, new point value is stored in new point online. With this, we are ready to go through the new approaches to shorten the trajectory. First, let's see how to cut the trajectory with collision. The trajectory is created with a line renderer that is composed of points that the object will pass on its movement path. By using the position of those points, we can check if there is an object with a collider between the points on the trajectory. To check this collision to any object with collider, we can use ray casting in the form of array starting from the previous point calculated and added to line points, line point i-1, in the direction of the latest point to newly calculated point calculated by subtracting the initial position from end position, the heat information that will be stored in Raycast heat, and lastly the max distance to check the heat is the magnitude of the distance between the points. This ray ray will be as long as the distance between the points and there will be no overflows while checking collision. If this ray cast returns true, that means the ray hit an object with collider, so will our trajectory. If so, the end point on the trajectory will be the position the ray hit the object which is at that point. After it is added to the line points, we break out from the for loop, not calculating the points passing the obstacle object. One more point is that, if you want your trajectory not to collide with some objects, you can change those objects layer and exclude this layer from ray casting using a layer mask. Also, when I enable the gizmos, we can see the red rays, showing each ray from consecutive points. I have created this representation using driveline method of debug. When the latest ray hits the collider, no more points are calculated and the line cut from the contact point to the wall. This was how to cut the trajectory with collision, but you can opt for shortening the trajectory with no need to collision checking like you would want to show only 25% of the path and let the rest to the imagination of the player. Now let's walk through a way that can help with that. There are two new variables, show percentage and line point count. Using show percentage, we calculate the new number of points line point count instead of line segment count to show the line renderer. Line point count is calculated by the percentage calculations using line segment count. From there on, in our step calculations, we continue to use line segment count. But since we will only need line point count number of points, we use it to iterate and create that many points on the for loop calculations. With that, we shorten the trajectory by a preset percentage. And if you would like, you can apply other ratios like state forwardly dividing the segment count with no need for percentage calculation. Now let's see both of features implemented in the action. To do that, I will simply uncomment the raycasting logic for the collision part and set the percentage a higher value to like a 75%. Now when I change the force magnitude and direction, it changes with collision as well as showing only a part of the wall path. Those were two ways to shorten the trajectory one with collusion and the other by showing only a part of the trajectory. Hope this will be helpful in your projects. And if you have any questions or suggestions or feedback, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video and want to see similar ones, you can give this one a like and subscribe for the future ones. I hope to see you in the next explorations and bye bye!